you guys ever think about dying? Hey sis, welcome to the Mama Trauma Barbie podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Wagner. And while I'm tough as a mother, sometimes I know we're all out here, tired of needing to be one. Buckle up as we land the mothership and all things motherhood in the real world. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our ridiculously amazing sponsors who saw an opportunity to support women in their day-to-day journeys by joining together to make this podcast a reality. Thank you, Jennifer Pansition with Edward Jones, Precision Spinal Care, Neuroflex Juice Company, Chica Creative, Law Offices of Jennifer Antonini, and the Joss District for believing in better care, better support, and better outcomes for mamas and their families. Hey friends, it's so great to have you back as today is the official release of season two of the Mama Trauma Barbie podcast. Today, I'm joined by my friend and latest guest, Rebecca Ahern, a Reiki master teacher and spiritual mentor who specializes in somatic energy healing, women's mindset, and shadow work integration. She is the founder and owner of Axiom Lux, a holistic wellness community that strives to be a safe place for all to embrace their inner truth with grace and gratitude while integrating the mind, body, and spirit connection. So please help me welcome my friend, Mama Trauma Barbie podcast guest, Miss Becky Ahern. Welcome to the pod, sis. Hi, how you doing? I'm good. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm excited to be here. Well, it is season two, and I felt like season one was one big giant therapy session. And as I really explored what I wanted season two to be, I mean, it was really down to the wire. I think there's so much going on out here that requires some time out, some input, some context, all the things. And so as I was thinking who I wanted to be a part of for season two, you are like the alchemist. And so as I looked at bringing all these pieces together from what was season one, you, my friend, are who came to mind and who our creator brought into my conscious as who needed to be with me for this one. Yay. Well, I'm absolutely honored to be here and chat with you and see how this unfolds and see what brilliance comes out of the the conversation. I can't remember how we met. I was thinking before this podcast and our kids go to the same school, which is how we originally crossed paths. But what? was it through Fallon Fodder? Was it through the restaurant? Because you have some eating restrictions, and of course, yeah. that's why I got involved. And was that where we really started to get to know each other? Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, having uh, kids uh, at the same school, and then eventually they were the boys were in the same class together. Uh, mm-hmm. But then with Fallen Fodder, when you uh, were offering the pickup home services or the drop off services, because my family is gluten free or dairy free. We are egg free. Not all of us, you know. Having that many like food intolerances, it's nearly impossible yeah. to be able to eat outside of the house. And so, you started offering these like, "Hey, would are you interested in trying out this meal thing?" I'm like, absolutely. If this means like one less thing that I have to like micromanage and keep track of and implement in my life, then sign me up. Let's figure out how to do this. So yeah, definitely a lot of correspondence there. Yeah, And then I attended one of your, what would we call it? Like a weekend Saturday retreat. I want to say it was two or three even years ago that you offered that. It was an event that you had at Axiom Lux. And I believe it was like an inner healing type workshop and it was beautiful. I had definitely some awakening moments. And I think from there you started offering your sisterhood events, which are these monthly gatherings where women show up and get together and just meet each other where they're at, listen, and just hold space and support where women are in their life and where they want to go. And so I am just so impressed, honored, and loving what you're doing and what you're also trying to offer for women in our community. 
Yeah. Yeah. The, the retreat, um, which is super interesting, uh, of like kind of like our idea of conversation today was called uh, Reclaiming Your Power. And it was about going inward and remembering who you were before society or whatever life told you who you were supposed to be and, and undoing the maskings. And yeah, the sisterhood gatherings, those are those are those are special because we don't get to often just show up and be heard and seen and uh, held in a container of love and non-judgment. It's not a regular everyday thing. And it should be. And it should be. So you're right. I feel like we already have the name of the podcast, which is going to be Reclaiming Your Power. (laughs) When I was on a walk a few weeks ago and knowing that season two was coming up, my podcast producer is like, Alicia, um, I'm noticing that you have not yet scheduled your episode zero. And I'm like, listen, I'm either going to end up doing it by myself, which I, I have not done an episode yet by myself, or I'm still really waiting for the right person to hit my heart. Now, I have individuals picked for certain topics throughout season two, and I have all of that lined up. I was just really struggling to find the right person that I felt was going to embody what it is I feel for women. And you just nailed it. And that's why you're here and why you were the right person. It's really reclaiming our power. And, you know, we have a start in history. We have a very masculine oriented society. We have these workplaces and we have these, um, pathways that have been designed for us. And I don't know about you, but myself personally, I've struggled with this, right? From what we were taught is little girls to who we were supposed to be in our 20s. And then we have these kids and like it just wrecks everything in the most beautiful way. But I'm noticing all of the women that are my age and younger, they're they're just caught in this place. And so I love how you said It's really reclaiming our power. And so I think that's going to be a really robust conversation between us today because I see so many conversations and I see so many trainings and I see so many people recognizing that there's all these problems and we need solutions. I just think they are all crap until we really stop, rewind the tape and really identify what's going on here. And so I called you the alchemist earlier. And what I what I love and what I mean by that is you really have a beautiful way of explaining the masculine and feminine. And so we really have this um, uh, imbalance between the two. And so I before we even go down that path, like maybe you can just really explain what is the masculine and feminine and and why it's important to the conversations that we're going to continue to have and have in, in the world moving forward. Yeah. So the feminine is very much this uh, flexible fluidity. It is about flow. It is about accepting and ebbing and moving. And like I move my body with it because like that is the energy of it. It is about uh, surrendering. It is about shift. It is about change and is about allowing um, when we think of the masculine, it is very much more uh, structural. It is more concrete. It is uh, when this, then this, and there's not a whole lot of like fluidity with it. It just is. Um, and both are extremely important. Uh, it is allowing with what is in the acceptance to then flow into the next space and allowing for curiosity. It is allowing for in the acceptance uh, what could be next. Not like just because it always has been doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. And and so having the duality of them working together, because you have to have both. You have to have both. Uh, it, it, it creates a sense of harmony and balance and we have, you know, the war construct that's very masculine and the competition and like strong, strong, strong. But we think of a woman and giving birth and how strong and powerful is that? And she 
doesn't have control, what she has to do in birth is surrender and trust that these powerful contractions are going to lead her into this next space of her life. But you can't fight it or it won't happen. You cannot fight those those powerful contractions. And, and so allowing that this is powerful and this is intense and surrendering into it and allowing that shift in that forward movement of of birth, like life and birth and and all that it is. So that's a that's a bit of uh, the the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Well, it's interesting to hear you explain it. And I mean, I'm sitting over here just relishing in that because <laughs> it really articulates the problem. And so we feel these contractions, right? Like what's going on in our world right now and whether it's politics or it was co- post COVID and now post COVID with flexible workplaces and people really regaining their power, right? So many people yeah. went through this experience and was like, wait, right? Like that was one of those contractions and they 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 birthed or labored their way through this and came out on the other side as to, oh my gosh, like here is this life that I want to live. Here are these needs that I have. Here is this family I have that I actually got to spend time with. And I want more of that. And so you feel these contractions now post COVID and people really starting to feel and experience things that they never did before. And so it's interesting that you explaining it the way that you just did, like we aren't letting go to what's possible from this experience that we went through. And yeah, it's creating all kinds of issues. And so it really does feel like a power struggle. And so, you know, where do you, like, I clearly this stems from the very beginning of time, but what's your take or what is your, your feedback on the continuum as to why this continues to happen? Like, why, why can't we get this right? Is it just, is it sin? Is it humanity? Like, is it like, why do we continue to keep ending up here? I think it's about safety. I think that we keep going to a space of struggle because it's uncomfortable and we are wired to survive. Our nervous system is wired to survive. And if something feels uncomfortable, our nervous system says, this isn't safe. No, thanks. I don't want to. And so it either fights it flights it shuts down and and we we go into this space of of our 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 cave man brain this mammalian just like there is not a whole lot of cognitive ability to to feel what what's happening and so we keep hitting these these walls these these contractions and we want to fight them because they're uncomfortable so again with birth. So if you are feeling this contraction um, of, of squeezing and coming in to to surrender into that allows for the expansion. And so we are moving into this contraction and it's uncomfortable and I want to fight it. I, I don't I don't like the way that this feels. And and I want to control because if I'm not in control then I'm not safe and I'm going to be eaten by this cougar and I have to know how to run and I know how to fight and I need to know how to hide or do whatever it is that I need to do. My nervous system is telling me that. And so I think that uh, generations have been programmed with their nervous system, with their DNA, with the energy in which we carry from, from people before us and our own experiences we carry these things and so it is ingrained into our nervous system to to hide or 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 fight or or to to run and so we have to retrain ourselves that we are inherently safe that it is safe to to surrender and to flow and to be flexible and to give into the uncomfortable and into the unknown and trusting that we are safe and able to be taken care of and loved and supported by everyone around us. Um, but we're all having that same trauma response. Yeah, I think, I was- it, I think it truly comes down to that. I was reading an article the other day, and I don't have the source, but it was something along the lines that individuals through epigenetics 
are dealing with an upwards of seven generations of trauma, and they think it could even be an upwards of 14 generations of trauma. And so I've really been thinking about that lately. And, you know, we take what's going on in the world and we take that energy. And not only is it rubbing up against what feels maybe like current trauma, but it is wrestling right with that with that energy that is inside of us or that has come with us. And so I think there's a lot of dualities going on at the moment. And I think that's why a lot of people are stuck, right? I feel like there is this birth happening and we are laboring and we are in this uncomfortable situation and you have more women in the workforce than ever. You have more kids that are sick than ever. You have these systems that do not um, accommodate or work with or partner with women and what our needs are versus men. And and to your point, you said it earlier, and I want to make sure I say it out loud to include this, but men and women both have masculine and feminine natures about them. And unfortunately, right, just due to the constructs of of our societies over the years, right, we have um, favored the masculine. And we can talk more about that in a minute. But I'm just noticing that we're not only dealing with the now, like we literally are coming up and trying to birth this new thing, but we're trying to bring so much of the old with us. And so what do you think, like if you could just pick one thing right now that you would love to see change, like what is the answer to this? Like how do we move forward differently through this labor? Well, I think we need to have an honest conversation with ourselves. I, I truly think that it's it's coming and having a conversation with ourselves of how are we actually showing up for ourselves? And you and I had talked about that a little bit uh, before with the how much can I pour from an empty cup? Well, we are. We're doing it. We are pouring every single day from this empty cup, yet we still continue to 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 find ways to to give and and so um taking this empty cup idea but coming back home and having an honest conversation of how can i companion myself how can i support myself what is it that i can implement to to look at where i've been where the people before me have have been how do I look at these cycles how do I look at these patterns and and come home and have an honest conversation of where can I empower myself a little bit more and that's going into your values that's going into your belief systems that's that's figuring out what is it that you need and how can you give yourself that and be with integrity so being honest and having integrity with yourself to then be able to support other people in a different way. That's the shift. That's the change. It's coming home and looking at the home that you came from so you can build a home in which you want to live your life. What What is that? How do you support yourself in that? It's I think it's about self-honesty. And then being honest with everybody else too and holding accountability of uh now, I expect you to show up with integrity. I expect you to show up with honesty, kindness, but honesty and 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 continuing to allow what these lies that we have been living and masking and and pretending, allowing it to actually crumble and saying this wasn't working. These constructs, these systems, they're not working. And we're going to be honest about it. And I'm going to be honest and say, I'm actually not going to participate any longer because it's not working. Thank you. Have a good day. And 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 just allowing the courage to do that. So I want to go through two things. One, I would love you to share some ways that you're doing that. I'll be happy to share some of mine and just some of that coming home, maybe for both of us over the last, for sure, couple of years. We can start there or or earlier. I mean, I love when I hear you talk. You talk about your teenage years and that story, right, that that you talk about the lack of your self-worth and you maybe can go through your journey and I can go through mine. And then I want to talk about some of those constructs that we're currently fighting against today. So here's what I see from so many women happening as well, right? Like, oh, well, she's ignoring her kids because she's out here doing the things or like, oh, she's staying home and she's not out here, you know 
harnessing the cause. And so I, I want to talk through that a little bit as well, because I think that's, you know, I mean, the, the guys are out here just fully in mascul- masculinity and right things continue because they at least have the program. It's working well for them and nobody's standing in their way. Women, unfortunately, a lot of us have bought into that program. Well, we had to recognize it. We had to and we're conditioned to, right? So that's the awakening right now. That's the coming home. We are realizing that this is not working, but we also have women continuing to be a large part of the problem because we are the ones deconstructing this, right? The program works over here. We're the ones redesigning it, but it starts with coming home. And so it's interesting. I'll be on LinkedIn. I'll be on, I mean, whatever, whatever social media platform I'm on. And it's just, it's funny to me, like some of the ways that we're talking about this, because I shake my head and I'm like, this is just more of the problem. Like we're not really looking at this from a point of deconstruction, right? It's just continuing to further feed the problem and make it look like it's what we really want. But if we're really being honest with ourselves, and I think that's what you said a few minutes ago, like we really have to be honest with ourselves. And I think for us to really say out loud, this is not working anymore. And we can take the judgment out of that, the weakness that we've been been conditioned to feel for being, you know, open about that. It doesn't mean we're wrong. It doesn't mean we're broke. It just means this isn't right anymore. It's not that it's wrong. It's been handed to us and we've been made to feel like the problem, right? What what I am so excited about starting to say out loud is like, this was never our problem. We've been made to feel that way. It is wrong, but more importantly, it's no longer right. And I think that's where we have to get honest with ourselves. So let's, if that starts with regaining our power and it starts with us getting real honest with ourselves, like what are some ways that you've gotten honest with yourself over the past couple of years? So I I think the ways that I have been honest with myself is asking a lot of questions of how am I actually participating in this construct, in this system? How am I actually participating that is, is continuing me to get in my own way of other women to get in their own way? And I, I think that that has to go with what is my worth? And at the core of it is that I I am worthy. And so it's just like thinking that I don't have to become. And so I did theater my whole life, my whole life. And in and, and theater, it is mirroring. It is becoming. It is portraying. And that was easy for me because I could observe and watch and then mirror and become on stage. But I also did that in life of of seeing something that was deemed correct or right or popular. Uh, I longed so much to fit in. And I then realized the more that I was finding out who I was and, and my beliefs and my values is that I actually didn't want to fit in because I never fit in. I, I was this square, sparkly star shape trying to fit into this round hole. Like I wasn't even a square. Like I was legit like a, just like a burst of of stardom and sparkles fitting into this like space and that's important and th- and there's there's a reason for that there hasn't ever been a me before and that i get to take up that space and if it makes other people uncomfortable that's okay and so by accepting who i was and not trying to fit in, I then started attracting in community that I actually belonged in. People that said, I see you and I see myself in you. And so then I started being able to see where other people were mirroring each other and 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 masking and presenting. And then where I would continue to do that and then come back home and say, I get to be all 
all of these things that I have been, all these characters I've played on stage or all of these friendships where I have been these different things, I get to be all of those things. I don't have to stop doing that if I am showing up with true authenticity to and, and honesty and integrity to myself, I get to be all of these things. I am versatile. I am able to 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 shape shift and and to be all of these things. I'm allowed to do that because that's a piece of who I am. But I also get to stand in the truth of who I am at the core of that. I am multifaceted. And it's not, it was like I was fragmenting my energy away from me and becoming and leaving pieces of myself there. So when I started to come home and ask myself questions of like, where am I sabotaging? Where am I in fight or flight? Where am I not really truly honoring myself or honoring others or or being codependent in a situation that actually wasn't supportive? When I was able to ask these hard questions and come back home, I was then also able to honor that I wasn't actually ever being fake. I just wasn't completely honoring that that was it was all of me. I get to be all of me and I'm not just this one little thing. So that's kind of, you know, some of the hard questions is of just like identifying all the pieces and parts of who I am, where I've left it and then how to like incorporate it and and really like truly stand in all of it. My cycles, my patterns, all of those things. Life happens. You can't predict the unexpected, but You can prepare. Your Edward Jones financial advisor, Jennifer Pansition, can help you with your financial goals, planning with life's ups and downs in mind. Call 419-841-2627 to get started. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Wait, wait, wait. Everyone knows a guy, but I got a gal. Chica Creative knows branding is more than just a logo. It's a story, an experience, a message. It's your magic. Need help capturing yours? Visit chicacreative.com. Yeah, it's a really great overview. And I really resonated when you said, um, you know, you had this bigness about you and you were, you know, you were made to feel or be small, right? By these systems or beliefs that are out there. And so, yeah, I mean, I, as you know, I'm literally almost six feet tall. And so I really resonate with that bigness, literally. I've lived in a world that, you know, being very male dominated or that masculine point, I literally have been made to feel small and asked to be smaller. And so for me, it was around 27, I hired a life coach and I just, it blew my mind in one session. And I, for me, that's where a lot of this reclaiming my energy and my power and and my journey began back to myself and back home. And I really resonated during that first session with identifying my values, who I was. But it was really interesting. I I I realized I was trying to change everyone else and that the gift was standing in these values and these beliefs and creating expectations and boundaries for myself that I needed to honor, right, versus trying to change others. And I think women get really good at that because we get uncomfortable. And so it's easier to want to fix everybody else around us versus dealing with our own shit, right? And so um, it it really was just mind-blowing for me. But I realized from there, um, I'll never forget, my coach sent me It was a a worksheet and it was to figure out what my values were. And I literally stared at that piece of paper and I had no idea. I had no idea when I looked at these words. I I had never considered any of them. And so it's a really powerful exercise. Like you said, it really does come down to understanding what our values are, what we believe about ourselves, what we need to not only learn, but unlearn. Um, And so that was really powerful for me. That was really taking my past and growing up in a small town and, you know, a mom that uh, stayed home. My dad wanted her to stay home, Um, her learning to regain her power and like just growing up in that type of environment and realizing young that I wasn't going to do that. But also coming, I was coming from a place of trauma 
versus my power. And so that was a really big part of my coaching experience when I was 27 was I was trying to change systems from a place of anger, um, not being healed well and not understanding who I was. And so I think for sometimes people even listening on this podcast, it's like if you're not getting the outcome that you're wanting, I think that's a real invitation into what part of you is not healed that is inviting you to come sit with it and be with it and play with it. Because like you said, that shiny star that was trying to go into that round hole, um, you it's still never going to fully fit until you continue to get the wholeness of that star, right? And so I know for me, I am I am just bold and big and I have the craziest ideas and I love big, I feel big and it just doesn't fit into the systems of our world at times. And so as I went through what were probably right, that coaching session at age 27, I had some more through my 30s, I had kids. And I think what becomes for difficult, what becomes difficult for women our age, especially as you get into your 40s, I think we also have this thing like that once you start to figure it out, it goes on autopilot. And what's so beautiful about what you explained about femininity earlier is we flow and we ebb and we go in and we go out. And I think we have fought that innate intuition and wisdom about ourselves. And we are actually very present beings. Like you said, when you're birthing, you are in that moment, you're dealing with those contractions. And I think we have been so taught to make things so black and white, right? That we were struggling with this permission at this moment in history. And that's exactly what it is. So it's it's so important to understand if you've never done the self work to really identify who you are, what your values are and what you you need. You're continuing to fight that every day. And it's hard to live a life that a whole world and society wants to give you when your body, your mind, and your nervous system are trying to let you own the one that you have and that the one that you could be, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like once we identify who we are and what we hold dear, then we get to communicate it with clarity to ourselves, right? Because we have this conversation within ourselves all the time And then we get to communicate those boundaries and expectations, rules, regulations to other people. So if we're living by living in this system that's not working, well, what what are what do we hold dear? And so then what are our expectations for ourselves? What are our rules? What are our regulations for life? And I've used this uh, explanation before um, with clients of what is important to you and how are you going to make sure that you implement the boundaries of that? And last Thanksgiving, we were having a conversation uh, in my family of like, well, what are we, what do you guys want to do for Thanksgiving? And my brother doesn't like turkey and his daughters don't like turkey. And I don't really like turkey, but like for Thanksgiving, like everybody has turkey, right? Or you have ham and then you have all of these side dishes And we kind of decided who told us that we had to have turkey on Thanksgiving. And so we didn't. We we had a uh, roast or something like that. And it was amazing. And everyone enjoyed it because we got to choose what we were going to have because no one freaking likes turkey anyway. (laughs) I love that. I think something that could be beneficial for those listening in this moment or what's coming up for me is we want this um, start and we want this destination and we want it to happen quickly. I don't know about you, but I I feel like this has been the longest um, stent in, in my healing journey that truly it has taken me a good two years. The past two years has really been a journey for me to completely, I would say completely turn a page. And I feel like so many women especially fall into depression or gain anxiety that when this time frame or this longevity comes with this healing. And so I want to bring it up on this podcast that um, there's there's no right or wrong about your timing. And in fact, I was so humbled the past two years. Like 
at times getting really frustrated through the journey and looking out and being like, but I'm ready. And God being like, you're not. And you need to come back here. And again, it was really just needing to spend some time with, um, I like your analogy of the star and the shininess. And it's like, look, until you feel every single piece of this. Now, it didn't mean I wasn't out there living my life, but it was it was kind of messy. It kind of felt like, um, you know, the new shoes that you get at, and it takes a minute to break them in. And I think that there's a lot of vulnerability there, especially as adult. Like when you're a kid, you're allowed to stumble and we're like, good job, you tried. And then all of a sudden as an adult, we we lose that forgiveness. We lose that compassion. And I was willing to give it to myself over the past couple of years. But I got to be honest with you, it, it was really hard and it continued to challenge me around my trauma. It challenged me around where I was still holding back. It was challenging me around who were really the people that were for me and who were the people that were against me. It challenged me around the bigness of the ask of my life. And was I willing to participate in this ask and and go all the way? Because if I was only going to put a little bit of shiny on my star, it wasn't going to work and it wasn't going to be truly honoring who I was. But but to be honest with you, the level of discomfort that came with the time frame and that came with the challenges, um, it was almost like its own therapy session. And we think of therapy sessions as like an hour long or a coaching session or an energy work session. But the real work happens outside of those sessions. They happen in this deconstruction of who we thought we were and it's a it's the becoming of who we are and so yeah that was um i don't know about you but it's been a really long two years and i just feel even as part of season two i think season one was allowing me to like continue to shed and say out loud some of the things that were going on but i really feel like season two is me not only like finding my foundation but really allowing me the voice to move forward and not only who I am, but for other women to know who they are so that we really can figure out how to use this masculine and feminine to design what is next for us. Absolutely. And, you know, to to build off of that, right, we have this foundation and, and we build off of it and, and inspiring ourselves and inspiring others. It takes courage. It is so scary to own yourself and to own the, it and, and to continue to show up in it. And so, like, I commend you in your courage and your ability to to show up. And, you know, I commend my courage and my ability to keep showing up and that our internal, like that intrinsic validation and and it means so much more than the constant that's happening around us. That's where like you you come home and you say, these are my values. This is how I'm expressing it. This is what I'm going to do with it. And I hear you and I'm going to continue to model and I'm going to continue to show up in in what my soul's purpose is. I'm going to continue to level up into my next highest potential and and trust that as I'm pulling apart these layers and I'm diving in and I'm pulling apart these layers and I'm diving in, that I'm, I'm doing it with my values. I'm doing with a solid foundation of understanding where I've been and where I'm going. And, and I'm doing it to create a space that that is serving to, to everyone, not just myself. True empowerment is empowering yourself and empowering everyone around you. It's like taking that addict and saying, I'm actually not going to give you money, even though you are saying that it's for food. And maybe you are going to use it for food. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to power you and I'm going to give you food or teach you how to make food. But but I'm no longer going to participate in this cycle that might be disempowering. You might be mad at me and I'm going I love you so much that I'm going to hold you accountable. And I love myself so much that I'm going to use courage and hold myself accountable in the same way. That really to me just boils down what we need more of from ourselves and what we need to do more for others, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it it's interesting as part. I like. Let's talk about truth for a minute. 
Yeah. Uh, this is coming up for me in this moment. I'll give you an example. The truth, I'm putting air quotes around it for the people uh, listening on the podcast. The truth for this podcast was I knew I was supposed to do it. However, all that comes with that, um, you know, I have people in my ear that I need to be posting more. I have people in my ear that I need to be doing more videos. And there's like this influencer culture at the moment that to me feels so inauthentic that even for people listening to the podcast, I, I want to like pull this out for a minute because I have decided, like I'm sitting with so much right now, even still in season two, I know what I want to see change I, about myself and and how I want to do this. But I think instead of at times, we have to check ourselves around what's fear and what's needed right now. Now, I think with these platforms and with what we're doing out here, I think there's so much noise at the moment. And I'm really trying to find the intentionality around what I'm trying to create. And so I want to be careful with how I'm posting. I want to be careful with my messaging. I want to be um, careful with how we are talking about parenting in marriage. And so where I'm going with that is I see so many people, the way that they're posting or influencing, how isolating and how judgmental it is. And so I I just, when I say be careful, I mean it in the right way because I now understand that if we are going to love ourselves and love others well, there is this responsibility of meeting people where they are and Absolutely. honoring that space. And so I feel like that's what's wrong at work. It's what's wrong in our marriages. It's even what's wrong with parenting, right? Because we have all these expectations for these kids, but at the same time, they're at a place and we're trying to get them from A to Z. And it's like, well, we also have to work with them to get them from A to D, right? And But that's even with adults. That's with our neighbors. That's with ourselves. And so I really find that we are lacking in the area of grace. We are lacking in the area of compassion and we're lacking in the area of nurturing. But again, these are these are considered female tendencies. And so I'm really leaning into that myself as I do this podcast to like flow and allow the permission that this isn't fear, but I want to truly care well and I am still finding my way through all of this. So I'm choosing my truth over the perceived truth of here's how you're supposed to market. Here's how you're supposed to participate right now, because I think it's dangerous to participate in a truth that does not feel resonant to you. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh. I mean, a hundred percent. That that is that is modeling uh with leadership uh and being accountable. Right. That that is that is the it is important to be careful because that means you are full of care and not just careful like, oh, be careful, like because of worry. It is being careful with mindfulness. Um, Mindfulness in Chinese means heartfulness. And so being able to be mindful and heartful as that duality is is the, is exactly what you're talking about there is like you are leading with heartfulness you're leading with mindfulness and and for us to forget that that we are all so interconnected we are all so much the same at the core whatever these mass and personas and experiences and the ways that we want to influence other people if we are not leading with heartfulness, if we are not actually being um, accepting of exactly each person as they are and allowing them that grace. The first step to mindfulness is acceptance. And so we get to accept that this is how things are, period. And that not that we need to do or change, that it just is. This is just how it is. And so with loving care, we we get to see what is the next right step in that space of of moving in our lives and on our journeys. Yeah. Yes, girl, yes, all the yes. <laughs> so let's talk about, right, we know the way things have been going are not working. We know some things that have contributed to this, right? We're dealing in a very 
masculine centered uh, society, especially here in the States. And we have this desire for this birth, right? This laboring to, to get to something new. So I'm intrigued lately by some research I've come across. And for time purposes, I'm just going to stick with one. But I got a newsletter the other day from The Care Gap. It's a really great newsletter. It really talks about um, caregiving. It's talking about you know the, the needs that are needing to happen within the workplace. But there was some research that came out that men are four to six times more likely to leave their spouse when they are diagnosed with cancer. Now, when I have been thinking over the past couple of years of all that's going on in the world, it was like this spiritual moment when I read this paragraph and I'm like, wait a minute, these are the people in charge, men, 80% of the time who have a very distinct level of values at the moment around success, um, power, um, greed, right? And so here we are as women laboring, going through these processes of being like, you know what? Here here are some things that need to change. And let's just pick a few for example. Flexibility in the workplace, uh, more accessible child care, and, you know, parameters to be able to participate with men in some of these different level positions that currently we, we do not have access to. Because again, men are in charge regardless of industry, even female dominated ones, that when you start getting to those top levels, men are still in charge. So it doesn't matter if it's politics. It doesn't matter if it's nonprofit. It doesn't matter if it's the workforce. 80% of the time, a man is leading. Now, I'm not here to bash men. I love men. I'm married to one. I think it requires masculine and feminine in order to have balance. Where I'm going with this is when I read that statistic, it very much in that moment sealed the deal for me that here we are trying to participate in a system and be like, Hey, we'd like flexible leave, more access to childcare. And like, hey, we'd really like some different pathways to get, you know, more promotional positions to be able to contribute at the top. But these are the same guys, not all of them, but many of them who have this ingrained belief system that we're bringing these solutions to them that are so feminine based, but they can't even stick with their spouse when they're diagnosed with cancer. And so it just really makes me think of what you talked about earlier about the masculine and feminine. So how do we get more of this feminine, nurturing, fluidity, openness into our homes, into our marriages, into our parenting, and into our workplaces if these are the people that are in charge, Becky? Yeah, I I think that it is we just keep bringing it to the table and and the, the systems are crumbling. Right. Like we are seeing it looks like everything's on fire, but like everything's on fire because it is crumbling because it's not working anymore. And and holding that accountability, I think that us maintaining our values, us maintaining our integrity and that honesty and keep being accountable to ourselves, we are are then asking other people to level up. Like you you don't get to participate in this level of of the society in which we are building because it it doesn't work. Like it it, it doesn't work. Like you're doing it and it feels like we're drowning, but we're doing it. It it just takes time. You said like seven generations, 14 generations. We may not be able to see it in the capacity in which we can see it. But I think that it's happening. It's unfolding. It's piece by piece. It's just like when us we go into our layers of that healing and, and that peeling it back and being accountable. It, we are doing it. it. It's just who are we to say in what timeline that this is going to happen? I'm ready, God. And God's like, aren't you cute, little Alicia? Not yet. Mm-hmm. Like, he just could keep going. And so who are we to say that it's going to be something that we see, see, see? It's happening. And and we're we're modeling it for our children. And I have two boys. 
and they see a strong mama and they see a strong partnership where my husband, he has a shirt that says um, only as strong as the woman next to me. And what a strong sentiment to say that like he will not allow himself to be that white man in charge uh, without the woman next to him being of equal value. And so we're, we're, it's happening. It's just we don't get to choose the timeline of of what it's going to look like in this this larger sphere. We just have to keep showing up and doing the work and showing up and holding people accountable, but also loving ourselves in the acceptance of this is what it is right now and it will continue. And that- it will continue. Yes. Yeah. I I I feel the bigness at the moment is the external, right? Like we're trying to change all of these systems and like you said they're crumbling but i i feel the greater invitation is is listen if you're attending all of these board meetings if you're trying to do all these big projects at work if you're trying to change things and things are a mess at home like the equation's backwards and and that's not a hit of judgment it is just a moment of awareness that this is it starts with self it starts with healing. And I feel that, you know, we're all out here like dual working parents and, you know, we have gotten so busy. You said it at the beginning, like, my God, like we're trying to pour right from these empty cups. And it's like this, again, I've used the word invitation a lot on this call. It's fun when I do these podcasts, like there's a theme that comes out every time. And for for this episode, it's invitation, right? Like what is the invitation that's showing up? And you said it earlier, it's it's for us to come back home. And I don't think any of this stuff changes externally until it starts with us. Who am I? What are my needs? Right. And then like, wait, how am I showing up as a wife? And I love that Dan has that t-shirt. And, you know, John and I have had some really interesting conversations lately. And, you know, I am at least a handful of versions of myself since him and I have gotten married. And so is he. But, Continuing to talk about who we are and what our needs are in these different stages of our marriage has been really interesting. Like, listen, I see just like women um, getting sick and men leave their wives. I also see how when women hit their 40s and they start to reclaim this power, why so many men divorce their wives and they move on to what was the status quo of what they were dealing with because there is there is this bigness around women reclaiming who they are and i've been so honored that my husband has wanted to come alongside me and continue to learn who i am and what my needs are and these are the type of men that this is the perfect place to learn like if you're running a company and you're not willing to figure out what the values are of your home you your life your kids your wife and you can't get it right there. It's it's not going to work externally. And so I love that you brought up Dan. I love that that's how he feels. And I think the work is not only external. There's so much right now when things are crumbling. If we're not solid at home, like we're going to go, we're going to go with this. But if we can get solid in our hearts and in our homes, it's just going to allow us to come out here and bring bring the goodness with us to rebuild and reconstruct these systems that are going to work for all of us. Yeah. And it, it, that's the thing is that it it's for all of us. That is the real empowerment is that these m- men that, that feel uh, threatened or, or something, you know, I can't, I can't say how they're feeling um, because a lot of them aren't sharing their emotions. And that is also a part of, the issue is that you're allowed to and that it's actually strong to to have these big emotions you are you it's courageous and strong and brave to dive into these feelings that it doesn't make you any less masculine it actually makes you an empowered man to to dive into that those those spaces of yourself and, and understand it and that's empowerment that's true empowerment You know, it's so fun listening to you and that powerful statement that you just gave. 
I feel like as women, I mean, we know this and I knew this coming into the call or I need to stop saying call podcast. I'm so old school. Like for sure. I'm absolutely in my forties and doing a podcast, but it's, um, it's, it's interesting to hear you say what you just said, because I feel in this moment, part of the problem is you're right. Women are fighting their femininity. So I'll give you an example. We get so frustrated sometimes about change and needing to be a mom and all that comes with that and the up and down and the sideways and the fluidity and the out. And I'm sitting here in this moment with you and it really is our superpower, right? It's that our greatest strength can also be our greatest weakness, but I, I it's not a weakness. It's just learning what to do with it. Like it is this gift that women are are beginning to see and it's unwrapping it and understanding what its power is and how to use it versus continuing to push it away, which has always been the invitation. And so, yeah, I'm just having a moment with you right now that when I start to get frustrated at times with some of the things that are showing up, like it's really my femininity being like, sis, like this is useful here. This is important and you need to do something with this. Yeah, we get to. We, we, we get, get to. to. That's the duality as that it's it's not either or. It's not black and white. It's that duality of what do we get to do? What do we get to lean into? And so asking, you know, the, the listeners, like, how do you I do this work? Well, you you get to do this work. You don't have to do this work. You get to be a mom. You get to have a job. You get to challenge the patriarchy. And and it doesn't have to be this huge like women in politics thing. It can start at home teaching your boys to feel their feelings in their bodies. Where do you feel that? That must be really hard companioning our daughters and saying, yes, you get to be um, a, a strong leader and tell people no. And, and you know, oh, you're crying. I hear you. I see you. So validation and companionship of it starts at home, like you, like like we've been saying, but also with the children of modeling it and, and allowing it to expand like the butterfly effect into the outer sphere. It happens and then it happens and then it happens. And and so breaking the cycles and the change that have held us and, and allowing it to flow and be fluid in the ways that it, it needs to within boundaries, both and duality. <laughs> I feel in this moment as well, like there are women who have been through these different stages in their life. And now due to social media, we have this proximity to seeing a lot more women in their lives in what they're doing. And so it was really great to just hear you go through that because I want to remind our listeners that, listen, if you're on the floor right now, you be on the floor and you be on the floor and you play with whatever is down there and decide what you're letting go of and what you're keeping. But don't compare yourself to the woman who's already been down there, done her work, and she has been released to go reclaim this power and to do something really ridiculously amazing with it. And I think that's part of our challenge at the moment. It's like, well, it feels really shitty. I'm down here. You know, why does she get to do this? You know, and again, it's just it's it's wishing well and supporting with that energy and knowing that your time and your healing and your journey is not to be compared. It is to be owned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You got to be a mess. Mm. You can't get to be in the depths of the darkness. You get to be a chaotic disaster because it's in that space that the pieces are all on the ground with you and that where you can pause. That's the acceptance. That's the grace. That's, you know, that's, that is power too, yeah, is, is it's just getting to be alone and not having anyone else companion you and feeling just absolutely devastated because then you can know how to move forward yeah when it's, it's where safe. i find yeah it's where i find my most intimate answers and where my creator is talking to me right when we're out here distracted by all the noise and the advice and 
influencers or family or friends or colleagues. Like it just, the noise goes away and you're able to just sit with that mess and and allow it to talk to you and allow it to give you answers. And so it's really fun over the past couple of years. I have some friends that they're like, if I don't talk to you for a week, I have no idea what's going on in your life. And I love to take, I love to just listen to that wisdom and, and play with what is, what I think is mine and what is for me, but just allowing at times that, I mean, it's even spiritually, biblically, you know, in there that, you know, you're, you're, you're told to take a right, but your creator or your spirituality is testing you to see if you're listening and you'll be asked to take that sharp left. And, and there's a lot of vulnerability and there can be judgment that comes with that. But when you get so in tune with who you are, like you're, you're willing to be radical. You're willing to let go. You're willing to embrace what is for you. But at times we just fight that because it's like, well, what will people think? Or, well, that's going to make me look weird or make me look stupid or make me look unprofessional. And I feel also women are just needing to just trust that innate inner wisdom about what is is trying to show up for them without bringing it up against the line of judgment regarding themselves or like what other people are going to think. Absolutely. A hundred percent. It doesn't matter because when it comes down to it, um, everybody's always more concerned about themselves and what they're doing than what anybody else is doing. And if they have an opinion about what you're doing, it's because they're mirroring their own experience mm-hmm. against you. Yeah. They're really judging themselves. Well, as I... Think about season two, and you've listened to some episodes. I know, yeah. you know, I know the intention, and that's one of the reasons I had you on. You're, you are the intentional. Um, you are the intentional queen. You are the alchemist. You are a creator as well, and you you honor energy, and I adore that about you. But what would you like to see from season two? And then I can kind of wrap up with what I'm feeling and where I would like to go, and why listeners should join on this Mama Trauma Barbie season two journey. Well, um, I would love to just hear anyone that you have on uh, showing up for themselves and showing up for for what is setting their soul on fire. What? How are they stepping into their soul's purpose? How are they stepping into their next highest potential what is it that that you're doing and 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 learning um i think that having people show up with that that passion sets that fire or reignites it or it continues to fan that flame in other people of saying yes me too i yes i resonate i relate because c- keeping connection I think is is that part of I'm not alone in this and I seen I feel seen, I feel heard, I feel validated and people and having experts or or people at least have a deep understanding of themselves and and what they're doing helps other people say, "Oh, okay, I can do this too." And not to influence somebody as an influencer, but just actually like modeling and doing the dang work. Yeah. I I I love that. Thank you. I feel for yeah. me for season 2 and again this is likely why you were the one that came to the forefront of this episode your statement of reclaiming your power. I would like to set that as the intention and why it now will be called reclaiming your power as the title for this one, but you know, I want to invite people home and that was what was said during this podcast as well. And we know that takes time, right? Like I think about people building our home or moving, like this generally does not happen overnight. It happens over months or sometimes even over years. And so coming along on this journey to to really figure out how you're either going to get home, how you want to get home, what you want in your home. And so really, um, you know, I, I wrote down before this call, like where is the breach within your contract with yourself? And where where do you want to realign it, reassign it, rewrite it? 
And how do you want to build from there? But what are your values? Um, what are the choices that you're making? And are they contributing to the outcomes that you want in your life? If they're not, great, you have the power to change that. And then, you know, what do you need to process in your life? Like what's down on the floor that you haven't been willing to play with? And then, you know, how do you stand back up? And like you said, um, that shiny star with all those glitter around it and how do you move forward? And I think if people can really take some time within those steps, this is how we change everything out here. We're never going to change our workforce or our homes coming from a place of anger and wounds, right? Like we have to deal with those things so that we can step forward and let go and create from that place of power. And so that's what I'm excited about for season two. I'm excited about for myself. I'm excited about for you. I'm excited about for our listeners. But um, thank you for being on the call and helping me articulate and find what it is that I wanted to set as the intention for season two. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. It's this is this is what I do every day is talk about this and and in helping women. So I really appreciate being able to just kind of just share it out loud in in a in a larger space. So thank you for for having me and uh it's lovely. It's just lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've always been, um, as I was, again, kind of stuck home and working through my floor moments over the years, you've been a solid friend that while I was down there, just holding that love and that space for me and and connecting and being there for me. And so thank you, friend. I love the work you're doing over there at Axiom Lux. Why don't we tell people a little bit about what you do and how they can get a hold of you? So uh, I am a energy worker. And uh, I think that that just kind of puts this tiny little cap on what I do because everything is energy. But I am a practicing Reiki master and spiritual mentor um, that specializes in energy healing. Um, I also specialize in women's mindset and shadow work. And we talked a lot about shadow work today, actually. And shadow work is just going into those spaces in which you either don't want to see or qu cannot see and digging in and pulling apart those those pieces. Um, I have learned over the years that to, to really support my clients um, that I have obtained all of these tools and I didn't have language to understand what these tools were. And so um, I now know that what I'm practicing is mindfulness and I am practicing somatic healing. And so I am being currently uh, trained to have certification as a mindfulness meditation teacher. I am being certified as a somatic healing uh person. I don't know. I don't have I don't have the quite language, but with that comes a an advanced master program in trauma certification. Um I'm receiving my 200 yoga teacher certification with a trauma informed yoga certification on top of that because I really want my clients to get into their bodies and to allow them to really reset their nervous system so that they can live in their highest potential so that they can truly show up with a quality of life. Um, but it comes back to the body. You can't think yourself through your feelings. You have to actually feel it. And so then you can get into a space of really working with your life map and, and then clearing out all the things that are holding you back from your health and your peace and love and abundance and so, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Kind of. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Well, you know, a lot of people don't understand that the nervous system is the boss of the immune system. And so, you know, we're not here to bash Western medicine. It certainly has its place in our society and in our world, and it has no doubt saved lives. But if you've kind of been low-grade struggling along the way, or you've been on some medications and you feel like they're not working, this type of work can certainly, again, help move and release trauma. And like you said, help you get in your body to identify what is or is no longer serving you and re recalibrate and rewrite that map to really produce a journey 
that is going to allow you to come home and reclaim your power. So thank you so much, Becky, for being here. I adore you. I love you. And I look forward to continuing to create with you. Yes, I love you too. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Mama Trauma Barbie podcast. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, please consider leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or leave a comment on Spotify. I would love to hear your feedback. And if you have any recommendations for future topics, let me know. Stay tuned for more great content. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time, friend. The information provided in the podcast is for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a substitute for professional medical health or nutritional advice. 